Tomorrow, we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi, meaning in Latin, body of Christ. The feast might be familiar to you as the Sunday other than Holy Thursday, at which there is a procession of the Blessed Sacrament and the singing of Pange Lingua, Sing My Tongue, the Savior's Glory. The calendar date for the feast is, in fact, a Thursday, to make reference to the Lord's Supper. But the celebration in many dioceses is transferred to a Sunday. This hymn, Pange Lingua, was written by Thomas Aquinas, who also wrote the divine office for the feast. Sometimes Aquinas is portrayed as the Spock of saints, the uber-rationalist who will do anything to make a good syllogism. But Aquinas has another side. His brother monks often found him weeping for devotion. His poetry, such as found in the Pange Lingua, is saturated with love and awe. And in fact, he stopped his work on the Summa Theologiae after a mystical vision of Christ. All my writing amounts to straw, he is supposed to have said after the experience. Although the hymn Pange Lingua was written for Corpus Christi, it is also used in the procession for Holy Thursday. And the last two verses, the Tantum Ergo, are sung throughout the year for the veneration and benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. For some of us, the song is as familiar as a Christmas carol. Because it's so familiar, it's easy to not pay attention to the words. But there's a lot of hard-hitting and beautiful theology packed into the verses. Take, for example, this verse. Verbum caro panum verum Verbo carnum efficit, fit que sanguis Christi merum, et si sensus deficit, ad firmandum cor sincerum, sola fide sufficit. The Latin poetry here is sonically very beautiful. You can notice the A, B, A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. You can notice the alliteration of verbum, verum, verbo, of sanguis, sensu, sincerum, sola. The sounds of the poetry are meant to be earworms, to stick in your head, and to draw your attention to what it's saying. Word as flesh, he makes true bread into flesh by the word. Christ as the Gospel of John tells us, is the Word of God, the Logos of God, who takes on human flesh in the mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This verse of Pange Lingua helps us to meditate upon the real presence of Christ in the sacrament of the Eucharist. The incarnate Christ is the Word of God, through whom all of creation was given being and was formed. Fully divine and fully human, he uses his creative power as Godhead, the word or logos of God, to transform the bread into flesh, his own. This bread, Christ, is the true bread. As Jesus says in the Gospel of John, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, it is my Father who gives you bread from heaven, the true bread. This true bread the real presence of Christ, cannot be perceived fully by simply looking at, touching, and tasting what appears to be merely bread and wine. This requires an act of faith. As the next verse says, Tantum ergo sacramentum venaremur genui et anticum documentum no voce dat ritui, prestet fide supplementum, sensum de
In this verse, Aquinas links faith to the new rite, to which the antiquum documentum seed. Aquinas isn't talking about some mysterious ancient documents awaiting discovery in a shadowy cave. What he is referring to by the antiquum documentum is the old model of the ritual feast, the Passover meal, which foreshadows and symbolizes the Eucharist, but in which bread is still just bread and wine is still just wine. The new rite established by Christ takes away the need for mere symbols, as Christ is fully and truly present in the sacrament. The signs in the Eucharistic rite are efficacious. They do what they symbolize. For Aquinas, song was especially associated with joy. The song of man on earth is a symbol for the celestial adoration of the Trinity in heaven. And this Eucharistic hymn then, let us sing with joy and in gratitude for the gift of real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Genitori, genitoque, lazet jubilatio, salus on earth virtus quoque, sit et benedictio, procedenti habut roque, Comparsit laudatio. Amen.